I want to tell you a little tale about how being unorganised can cost us money. I'm using all different areas around the home. There's lots of different hacks above the microwave, which is perfect. So we now have four chairs. You couldn't make this up. Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. I'm back with another renovation vlog for you today. This is number three of the most recent series. So in the first one, we were talking about floors. The floors are now down. In the second one, we were focusing on the kitchen and installing some beautiful new worktops, a new sink, a new tap. I'll link both of those videos in the description box. And in today's vlog, I'm going to slowly start to put the living room back together. So this space has become a bit of a workshop. It's been the space where everything from the kitchen came into while work was happening in there. There's been a lot of cutting going on in here, so it got incredibly dusty. I feel like I've cleaned it already multiple times. The big shelving unit that was in here from the kitchen is now back in the kitchen. So I'm starting to get some of the space back and I have managed to paint all of the walls with the bargain paint that I bought. It was one of those one-off mixes where the machine goes slightly wrong for the bargain price of 20 pounds. So I'm delighted with the color in here. I will give you a full tour once everything is kind of back to normal. I say back to normal, I might have a little rejig. You know, it wouldn't be one of my videos if we didn't move things around potentially or swap things around or do something a little bit different. But yeah, it's very exciting because this is the first time having a wooden floor in this space. So it already feels very different. We've got a slightly different color on the walls. They were just plain white before. And yeah, I'm just really excited to tidy up in here and get things looking like a living room again, just being able to enjoy the space. So let me show you how it's looking now. Oh my goodness, where to begin with this lot? So what have we got here? We've got some cleaning supplies. We've got some bits from the kitchen that need to be put back. And some more bits from the kitchen in this crate down here. There's food stuff in that other crate. And then I've got kind of odds and ends in that crate, <laughs> lots of crates. <laughs> this over here, that's more bits for the kitchen, I think, mixed in with some random, oh gosh, I've got a haul, an Ikea haul waiting to be filmed. And I've also got a couple of bits from the boot set, including this shelving unit, which I also need to sit down and film. So I need to put those to one side. And I'll probably, once I've sorted out my usual filming corner, I will film those over there. We have a very messy table with lots of decorating equipment in this crate here. The one above it is full of fridge magnets. <laughs> then I've got some paint, some random shelving. Oh my goodness, it's got such a muddle in here. Down here, we've got the off cut of the shelf which I think I'm gonna have a go at making something with. I also have this stained glass panel that I think I'm going to either move or maybe sell because it was kind of just hidden behind the sofa and underneath the side table. And then we have some molding here that goes above the door, I need to put that back. And I rescued this big chunk of wood, I couldn't resist that one. It's like a really thick, almost like a fence post. I've got one more over here. I just thought they might be handy. <laughs> Having random off cuts of wood, I find really useful when I'm doing kind of like these renovation works. There's always somewhere that needs a tiny little bit of wood. Um, I'll show you more of that in a moment as we take a look at the kitchen. And then over here, we have bread bin, a cool bag with some random kitchen bits in. We have, oh, what are you doing, mister? Oh, thank you, pumpkin. <laughs> always here to help, aren't you? That's your little disgusting little ball. Do you want to go and chase after that? Go on then. <laughs> He's off. So, yeah, as I was saying, we have some scaffold board shelves here. These were from the kitchen, but I think they probably won't go back, but I'll use them somewhere else. If they were a bit longer, I probably would have been able to use them on the old um, piece over there to maybe create like a window seat or something like that, some of you were suggesting in the comments. So thank you so much for all of those suggestions. And then what do we have over here? We have a new ring doorbell. That's a very, oh, let's not even go there. And then up here we've got things like wood glue, sellotape, a sewing kit. It's all very random and very messy. And of course my tripod, because you know, we've got to keep up with TikTok. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Is that the game now? Is that the game? Where have you put it? Where's it gone? Okay, oh, it's here. <laughs> I thought you turned into Mr. Magician. Ready, pumpkin? Go on. She usually mittens that loves to play fetch. 
but it would appear that pumpkin, oh, hello mittens. <laughs> Speaking of mittens, here she is. Is pumpkin gonna bring little mousy ball back? <laughs> Come on then, bring it over to me. Oh, are you gonna drop it there? They never bring it all the way. They always drop it. <laughs> so I have to go and pick it up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Leave that alone. Thank you very much. As you can see, Pumpkin is back to his usual self, <laughs> which is lovely to see. These things, these are outdoor like garden mats and they, they've been so helpful just to kind of throw down to protect the floor because they've got kind of like, they're almost made of plastic, aren't they? And I've just thrown them onto the floor to put things onto and to protect the floor a bit. Right, I've got to get on you two. You can't just distract me all morning. No, you can't. I mean, you can, but... <laughs> There's so much to do. I'm feeling the overwhelm a little bit. You know when you just don't know where to start? I think I need to start by putting this bag of rubbish out because Pumpkin is not going to leave it alone. Thank you. Let me start, yeah, thank you for that. I want to tell you a little tale about how being unorganised can cost us money. I mean, especially when you're doing your renovation. But my ring doorbell stopped working and I went and had a look at it and I took it out and I realised that there's like a little piece that goes kind of through the door. It's like a metal ribbon and it obviously connects the battery to the ring doorbell itself. A very vital piece of um, the ring doorbell. And it had snapped. So. I foolishly presumed that it was completely broken. I did Google and search on YouTube how to fix a ring doorbell, but all the tutorials that were coming up were talking about dead battery, power supply, um, resetting it. I did all of those things. And then with the um, discovering the snapped ribbon, I thought, well, that's it then, that's broken. So off I went to buy a new ring doorbell, which cost me 99 pounds and I fitted it and the old one hadn't thrown it away just yet I wanted to take it to the electricals recycling point where you can put any electricals in to be recycled I've worked with recycle your electricals before on Instagram and they've got a feed that gives you loads of information about that um, if you want to check it out because when I put that post up on Instagram a lot of people weren't aware that you could recycle small electricals loads of things like electric toothbrushes, all kinds of things, and they have these kind of banks that you put them into all over the UK. So I thought that's worth mentioning. But back to the ring doorbell, what did I discover? I discovered the instruction brochure leaflet thing, along with a spare of this metal ribbon thing that could have gone into the doorbell and probably fixed it. So that is £99 that I have completely wasted. There we go. That is a little cautionary tale <laughs> of how being disorganised, unorganised, and it can end up costing us unnecessary money. I also just felt like I probably didn't have the time to stop and think it through properly. And had I have not rushed so much, I probably could have done a bit more research and, you know, found somewhere online that you can replace that specific part. The um, button on it as well had gone. And I just thought, oh, that's broken as well. Since doing more research into this, I've discovered that you can replace the buttons. You can buy them for two or three pounds online. So yeah, that's my little lesson. <laughs> I thought I'd mention it in case you have a similar doorbell and it breaks. Um, yeah, save yourself a hundred pounds and probably fix it for free or for very little money. And yeah, there's lots of things in our homes that are like that, isn't there? That we can't find. I've lost my glasses, by the way. They've completely vanished now. So I'm just contact lenses every day, which is okay, but I don't particularly like wearing them all the time. So hopefully as we get this place sorted, my glasses will turn up again because I'm kind of missing just being able to pop those on. But a bit of an organisation in the home can really cost us. It can cost us time, it can cost us money. So I am very much looking forward to getting things straight around here again. So into the kitchen and the shelving is back on the wall. I've had to drill it in. I used the existing, how do I explain this? Yeah, I used, I used the existing holes on the wall, but the whole thing has come across a little bit. I extended the worktop out slightly, as you may remember, so it could all come across a bit so that this now lines up perfectly 
with this wall here. I mean, I say perfectly, nothing straight in this house, but what it does is it kind of sits flush with that. And I think I might end up putting some, why can I never remember the word? Paneling, tongue and groove, that kind of thing around the back here and maybe build some shelves in back here. So we also have this bit here, which will have the upstand. Some of you were asking what an upstand is and it's just like a skirting board that's made out of the same material as the laminate, but you put it on the wall. So kind of like a very short splashback and it's called an upstand. So talking about the little scraps of wood and having uses for them, because this sort of is flat against the wall, the whole kitchen slopes a tiny bit, which means the worktops slope the tiniest bit. And that means that the front here was almost like floating. So I've installed a very thin, strip of wood down here which you can only really notice because of the difference in color and that just helps this sit on the worktop and it means that um yeah that front bit's not floating but i just need to paint that in i put some caulk on there as well and i'll just put some masking tape underneath and paint it to match the um shelf i did the same on the other side over there so yeah i can put the shelves back onto this and then a few bits can be put back and go into use again and then here, I think we definitely do need some shelving. And I think I'll probably, I think it'd be quite nice to maybe match this line here of this. That could become a shelf maybe. Going across there, could potentially even put some trim on the front to match that. So if one of them was here, then you could probably have one more, I think. And then that would be enough above um, the coffee machine and the microwave. So yeah, we'd have, probably one and two. So a little bit lower probably than where they were previously. These are the brackets from the um, scaffold board shelves. So yeah, not sure what to do about this wall. I've had lots of different suggestions from you. Thank you so much for those about having um, a textured wall or a textured paint. The paint that I was thinking about using isn't actually textured, I don't think. It just looks textured. I'll double check, but I don't think it actually gives a physical texture. I know some of you were concerned about if it was kind of like a physical texture, then it would be quite difficult to clean, which makes total sense. So um, thank you for flagging that. And yeah, I'm so undecided about the walls. I think once the upstands go in and the plaster is fully dried, it will help me and I can tidy it all up and see how it's all looking in here. That will really help make that sort of decision because at the moment it's kind of, it's quite hard to visualize and it's quite messy. <laughs> yeah, today I have a lot of sorting to do, tidying, putting back. It's all go. <laughs> I just need to crack on. Okay, the shelves are on. It's always tricky putting those back on. I feel like my technique is way off. <laughs> but yeah, I just need to touch up some of the little um, bits of filler where I've covered up the um, old holes and then I just need to pop a little bit of paint on the new screws to hide those. And yeah, really pleased with how this is all looking. Total mess down here, I'll sort all that. It means as well, I've got somewhere to put you on this side so that I can <laughs> rest my camera somewhere, which is always handy. I've just put these um, peel and stick tiles behind the tap there just to protect the plaster so it doesn't kind of splash up the wall there. I think some of you suggested maybe using a metro tile in here, which would look quite nice, I think. But um, there's a lot going on in this kitchen already, isn't there? So I'm not sure. I feel like having had tiles before, I kind of am not leaning towards tiles. I just like to kind of make it different as I'm changing it. Um, but yes, where do I start? Where do I begin? <laughs> I think it's gonna be a case of a music montage. You're keeping me on Yeah, I'm strapped in Stuck in a song Like a merry-go-round My head is spinning I see you rapping about I'm sure as hell not 
just sat down with a coffee. I thought it would take five minutes, you could put the kettle on too, if you haven't got a drink already. And I'll show you the bits that I picked up in Ikea. I've got pumpkin down here already having a little rummage, wanting to know what's in the bag. So if you're curious, like pumpkin, to know what I bought, then let's get into this little mini Ikea haul. So first of all, I picked up one of these, they're called Avsteg, and they are like a metal microwave shelf, or I guess you could use it anywhere in the kitchen, basically. I thought this was a really clever little design. So it's basically like a metal um, shelf with just the two sides and a piece down the back that supports it. And it can take quite a lot of weight. I bought this with the thought that potentially I could stack the air fryer on top of the microwave, although I'm not sure um, if that might be like a little bit rickety for that, but this does hold quite a lot of weight. So yeah, I'm gonna get that built and it'll be quite a nice, probably temporary um, solution for um, just some more storage in the kitchen while I'm figuring out all the shelving kind of above where the microwave is now. Also, I thought this could actually make a really nice little side table. I might do a little DIY on it afterwards because I felt like you could cover this top section and then maybe spray the legs and it could be quite a nice little piece. Also, I thought this would be quite handy on a desk as a kind of like desk organizer because you could slide your laptop away underneath it and then have all this sort of space above. So yeah, lots you can do with this or even like if you wanted to um, put your laptop up high and then have a separate keyboard so you've got it a bit higher, that can be useful sometimes. So yeah, it was only 15 pounds, which I thought was really good for kind of like a quite solid metal little shelf. So that's the first thing I got. I went with Luke, but I didn't vlog, but I think, did Luke, yeah, Luke vlogged in store a little bit. That vlog's already live. He was getting some extenders for some Billy bookcases. He's doing like a built-in um, Billy shelving kind of configuration in his living room. And I'm still thinking about buying an additional bit more uh, Pax wardrobe for my packs. I've seen, I had a look last night on my phone and they've got like a little Pax planner where you can plan the different wardrobe sections. And for what I'm after, it's coming up quite reasonable actually, because I don't want a door on it. I just want some open shelving and then maybe one rail just to have my kind of current season coats and overshirts just so I can see them and everything else can be kind of tucked away in the main wardrobe. So I think it was coming up at like 120 quid, which I thought it was going to be quite a lot more than that. So I think with having the doors on the wardrobes and more um, shelves and other ones, they came up quite a lot more expensive than that. So yeah, might be quite a nice, relatively affordable solution to create quite a lot more storage in the bedroom, which I am in need of my shopping habit. <laughs> I've actually been really good in terms of decluttering and stuff, but yeah, I do have quite a lot of coats and overshirts. I picked up these bins, £1.50 each, and they're just solid, sturdy plastic, decent size, and really handy for different rooms around the home. And when you have bins in different rooms, it just makes it so much easier to tidy up, I think. So yeah, I thought they were really good value for £1.50 each. Oh, I just need to change my battery two seconds. I picked up one of these. This is called Stolfet, and this is like a wooden bamboo tray, but it's on legs. So there's lots of different uses for these. I've seen people use these this way up to put like books in between. It's like a little mini uh, bookshelf or bookends. I've seen them used for displaying things really nicely. I've seen them used on the wall this way. I've seen them um, used in all different areas around the home. There's lots of different hacks that you can do with these. Also as a chopping board, you can then place, am I holding up? <laughs> Sorry, holding it completely the wrong way up. Um, you can place a container underneath and scrape into just kind of like a little raised surface. Maybe a lap tray, in fact. Um, so many different uses for this. And these are £12 each. And I thought that was really nice. Quite nice to maybe pop next to the cooker just to like stand some bottles of um, oils and salt and peppers if you've got just a few that you want to have to hand. And yeah, never had one of these before, but I thought it might be something... I could get a lot of use out of around the home. And I love how many different uses there are for these. And then I also picked up a new rug. This should be just perfect for in the hallway. And we were looking at this and I couldn't find the price on it. And I said to Luke, I'm gonna take you to the till and see how much it costs. And I was like, how much do you reckon this is gonna be? And he guessed 19 pounds. And he was like, how much do you want to pay for that? And I was like, 15. 
<laughs> so I took it to the till. It was £17, which actually I think is pretty bang on for this. It's nice quality. As you can see, it's this really nice woven jute, but it also has a rubber backing on it, so it's not going to slip. And if this works nicely, I'll probably get a few more of these because they're just handy to dot around, aren't they? And they're nice and, my favourite word, robust, sturdy and timeless. I have a rug like this that goes in the living room here, a large one, a big floor rug, and I love it. And yeah, the kittens love them too, but they do give them a little scratch, but they seem to be able to tolerate that, as in the rug seems to be able to tolerate their claws. And this one is called Low Howls, in case you want to add one to your list next time you're going into Ikea or if you're doing an order online. And then I picked up a couple of these rugs. These are only two pounds each and I've used these loads. They're great for little throw down mats near the front door. They work really nicely as a bath mat as well. They're just this, almost like a hessian. And for two quid, I just think these are fabulous. They're kind of, yeah, really nice natural woven kind of feel, quite thin. I mean, this would be great if you just wanted something to throw down, you know, if you were going for a picnic or something or at the beach even, just a really nice little, um, little mat or rug. And I was just thinking as well, maybe even for in the car, you know, to pop in your boot, just to line your boot could look really nice. Two quid, you can't go wrong. So I got a couple of those. So I just find them so handy. And the kittens like those as well, they're just kind of nice to lie on <laughs> the kittens. And then I also picked up, these little brushes. So these were, I think it was £1.50 for the two. And let me just show you. There's two in here. And it said for um, cleaning shoes. So I've still got those Gucci monstrosities that I want to <laughs> have a go at cleaning up. This one is called Petrig. There you go. And yeah, the good thing about these brushes, they're kind of like, um, you know, often with cleaning, we use an old toothbrush, don't we? But this is really, really firm. You wouldn't want to clean your teeth with that. So really good for a bit of um, scrubbing. I'm thinking around like, you know, the sides of a shoe where it can get quite dirty. And then this is a larger one and a bit softer. So maybe just feel like cleaning like the surface of trainers and stuff if you like lather it up a little bit. So yeah, I shall pop those into my cleaning caddy. Nice little size and I quite like the colours of those too. Oh, and I also bought a classic <laughs> bag. These are 75p, in case you're wondering how much these will set you back these days. Well, it has a name as well, Frank, Frank Tar. I didn't know the bag had a name, but everything has a name in Ikea, doesn't it? So yeah, there we go. Those are the bits that I got from Ikea. Let me get this lot put away now. It's a little bit later on and I've just built the Ikea shelf to put above the microwave. So I just thought I'd show you how that's looking. So yeah, as you can see, it's created quite a lot of storage space above the microwave, which is perfect for the time being. So I've got somewhere to stick all like the coffee and uh, tea bags and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, until the shelves go in, that's gonna be a really nice little solution. But this is good, isn't it? I think this is really handy. As I was saying, I think you could use this all over the home and it could have many different uses. I do think a little upcycle on this could be fun. We could cover this in some kind of contact paper and maybe spray paint the um, legs and the back. I think with this curve, it might look quite nice in gold. Could be quite a nice little side table or bedside table or um, coffee table. And it does hold quite a lot of weight. I think you could definitely put like kettle and toaster on there if you were short of space in your kitchen. I think air fryer might be pushing it a bit, although yeah, it is pretty solid and it does tell you um, how many kilograms it can hold. So you could always weigh it. Um, if you weren't sure. But yeah, if you are short of space on your counter, this can offer a um, solution for you and it's 15 pounds. So yeah, I think that is really good. And of course, Pumpkin has to give it the seal of approval and sign off. So what do we think, Pumpkin? Are you happy with it? What do you reckon? <laughs> He's just looking at it as if to say, what is that? Talking of Ikea, Pumpkin is sitting on one of my best ever Ikea purchases. These are, I think they're 19 pounds now, the last time I checked in store and as well as being the perfect height for cats and kittens to sit on they are so handy around the home they are a little step ladder so you know if you need to reach up high do any diy tasks the amount of time i've got this out for trades for them to use quickly to get up high rather than you know getting a big bulky ladder out and also you can kind of paint them because they're just like a natural wood and also they work quite nicely as little um, side tables i've seen them used as bedside tables where you can pop a phone charging down on that section and stuff on the top 
um, used in children's bedrooms, all sorts of different things. Yeah, one of the pieces that I bought from Ikea years ago, still going strong, and once the renovations are done, I think I'll give this a sand down and maybe a nice coat of paint with some of my leftover paints. What are you looking at? <laughs> He's off to find mittens. So yeah, definitely worse for wear, but very loved and a highly recommended Ikea piece. And inspections are now taking place. <laughs> what is going on here? What is going on here, you two? They've been jumping right up on top of this. There's a nice little gap for them to squeeze into. They love being up high. I knew it wouldn't take long. <laughs> what do you think, pumpkin? chairs that seem to be in pretty good nick being thrown out. I think that Luke might like these for his garden so yeah I'm gonna grab a couple and drop him a message and I think I can make use of this piece of wood here. So we now have <laughs> four chairs in the living room but Luke has said that he would love these and is gonna pick them up um, in a couple of days so that's all good. So I will keep these safe for Luke and these will come up a tree just with a, I think you can just jet wash them can't you and then add some teak oil. I've had a little Google search and these are really nice quality ones. They're coming up at like between like 130 and 150 pounds each. So yeah, some really nice quality chairs here and they'll be perfect in Luke's garden. Also, this piece of wood, I'm gonna give it a quick clean, but let me show you. Remember the off cut from the shelving unit? You couldn't make this up, it literally just kind of slots in so that can make a really nice support for the top then I could just add some trim around to cover the gap I think that's probably the best way to do it I could just cut these bits off but I feel like it's almost like it's been made to measure I'm not sure if I could cut those off there's a tiny gap so I'll have a play with that but yeah I couldn't believe how nicely that fitted what I might even do is cut some little um, slits down in this wood so that these can drop down. That might be a vibe. Okay, but that's for another day. <laughs> so you may remember I have started going to yoga. I found that getting a bit creaky and I want to kind of increase my mobility. And something that I've really noticed is when I'm editing, sometimes I get pain in my lower back, I feel it around my hips. And FlexiSpot have got in touch and asked if I would be interested in working with them again. So I thought now would be the perfect time to upgrade the desk in the office. A few years ago, I got a FlexiSpot desk and essentially they are an adjustable desk. So you can adjust the height and turn it into a standing desk. They're really clever and I've really enjoyed using the current one, which is all white. But as they got in touch, I thought now might be the perfect time to upgrade it a little bit and go for a slightly different color. So I've gone for like a wood on the top and then black legs instead, which I think will tie in really nicely to how I'm planning on doing the office. And also the legs on the bed in there are black, so I think it will go really well together. The desk has arrived. A big thank you to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this part of today's video. What I'm gonna do is get cracking and get it built and then I can show you it. And I'm gonna try and not stop and just smash through it. No distractions. The time is now 2.35, so let's get building.
Okay, the time is now 3.27. So yeah, just over an hour for that. Just switching off David Gray there. I like a bit of David Gray <laughs> when I'm doing my flat pack. I find it quite calming music. Right, let me take you through this. I plugged it in. It has got a really long wire, which is really good. So if your desk isn't situated near to a plug, you shouldn't need an extension lead. This is, yeah, really quite long. As you can see, I've got it plugged in over here. Just peel the plastic off the controller, which is always very satisfying. The parts are quite heavy, so the legs are very heavy, and the box that the legs come in is very heavy too. If you're struggling with that, you can always open up the box and take all the parts out separately to transport them into the room that you're assembling your desk in. I'm really pleased with how it's looking. They've got all different kinds of desktops to choose from, so you've got different woods, you've got white, black, you've got different legs to choose from as well. Just having a fiddle with the controls, so basically, you have the up and down, so the desk will just slowly rise and go down to whatever height you like which is perfect because sometimes you just want to get your desk up a tiny bit or down a bit or you might even be halfway through the day and then you notice that i don't know you've slumped a bit maybe you just feel like you need to bring everything up a tiny bit so you've got a really nice control there just to move it up and down by a fraction or a considerable amount if you want to you can also then, when you've chosen a height and you like that height, you can set it to number one, number two, standing or sitting. So I've already had a little play with this, worked out my standing height so that I can kind of be stood nicely and have my um, hands on the table. And so if I press um, standing now, it will just take it to the height that I've set for that, which is perfect. Just angle you down a bit. And then if we press the seated position, it will take it down to how I've set it for sitting. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this here for the time being, just while I've got decorating to do in the office room. And also I want to film some Easter DIY, so it might be a nice little setup to do that here and edit this vlog, of course. So I'll link FlexiSpot in the description box if you wanna check them out for yourself. I'll link the specific model of desk as well if you want to click through and have a look at more details on this one. So yeah, now I'm looking at this side of the room and I'm thinking, I've got four garden chairs in here, I've now got an upturned table on the sofa. It's kind of looking worse than the start of this video. Let's be real. <laughs> so I better get cracking and get all this side into some kind of order so at least we can sit on the sofa. Just having a play around with the um, size of this to see if it could actually work as a TV stand in here. It's a bit lower and a bit narrower than what I had before. These two seem to love it. And if I can get it nice and robust, maybe with the marble top, potentially this could become a TV stand. So yeah, I'll keep you posted. What do you think, Mittens? Would it be a good TV stand? <laughs> what are you looking at? Are you looking at Pumpkin? Oh yeah, doggy outside. Well, Pumpkin seems to be enjoying it in there. <laughs> do we think we would paint this? I'm thinking potentially just because of the different wood tones. Okay, it is a little bit later. The sun is just starting to go down. I did hear, I think it's, is it in two weeks time? Or maybe, maybe it'll be about a week's time by the time this vlog goes live, that soon it's gonna be getting dark at 7.30 p.m. here in the UK. So that's exciting, looking forward to that. Um, yeah, let me show you where I'm at. So we have space on the floor, I've cleared the table, the sofa is sittable. <laughs> um, that corner is still a mess, so is the mantelpiece, but yeah, I feel like I've made some progress. We've got a few jobs ticked off the list. Artwork is back up on the walls. I can see the floor. I can sit on the sofa. I can eat dinner at the table. Yeah, although it feels very much like I'm kind of going around in circles at the moment. Bit by bit, I feel like things are getting there. So maybe in the next vlog, I will focus on the office, perhaps, and then show you how that's looking. I want to get the desk set up in there. I also have 
the little unit to build. So once I've done the kind of DIY upcycle on that, I feel like that'll be another little job ticked off and something I can share with you. And the chairs that are in the corner <laughs> will be on the way to Luke. So you'll have to go to Luke's channel to see what happens to those on the next step of their journey. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already for regular renovation updates as well as brand new videos every single week. I often take you to the shops, to the car boot sale and on my travels as well. Anything that I feel might inspire you. So yeah, do stay tuned for more vlogs. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget you can always catch me over on TikTok and Instagram. It's Mr. Carrington over there and I'll see you very soon. Bye.